Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 61. As always, I really appreciate you tuning in, and I hope that you get something useful out of these tips. Uh, in today's Tip of the Day, I'm going to uh, expand a little bit uh, by request on something that came up out of yesterday's Tip of the Day, which was about adjusting the time scale of a shot. Uh, an individual on, I believe on the steam powered forums, I don't remember the name right offhand, so I apologize, but he had an interesting question. What if you wanted to adjust the scale of individual elements of a shot? Like you wanted to have one character move more quickly than the others, or you wanted to have one character move more slowly than the others, uh, and adjust things, uh, in, in, adjust timing of elements individually within a shot. Well, fear, no, fear no longer. Anyway. Uh, have no fear. That's the word I was looking for. What can I say? It's been a long day. Uh, have no fear. I can show you how to do that. And uh, by way of demonstration, I've set up a really simple shot here. I've got a spy doing one of his taunts and a scout who runs by him. Uh, and that's all that really happens. There's really nothing terribly interesting. But it serves to give us two elements to play with. Um, so in order to access the individual elements of uh, a shot, uh, you need to double click the shot. So if I double click this, I will then uh, be, I will, it, it will take me into what's called a channel track group. Uh, and if you get into this view and you don't know where to go, I've showed you this in my previous tips, but if you haven't seen them or if you don't remember or you weren't paying attention, <laughs> Uh, then uh, the up button will take you back up. And navigating through these is a lot like animating, or excuse me, navigating through these is a lot like navigating through the um, through the animation set editor or the element viewer. It's it's pretty hierarchical. Uh, so when we get into the channel track group, we will see that there's one for the spy and one for the scout. Let's say that I wanted to have the scout slow down and look like he was in some sort of time lapse thing. Well, no problem. Uh, remember yesterday I said Control Alt and Shift will adjust the timing of a shot. So I'm going to press Control Alt and Shift, and I'm going to just drag this out a little bit. And now the scout is moving in super slow motion. Actually, it's not all that super slow, but you get the idea. So I was able to change the uh, the timing of that so that the scout was moving much more slowly. And of course, if I go Control Alt and Shift and drag it this way, then the scout will be moving much more quickly. Actually, no, it didn't happen. What happened is that the scout uh, began moving earlier in the... Sh there it is. Yeah, see, he's moving a little bit more quickly there. And uh, when you do these kinds of adjustments, sometimes you may have to adjust the in and the out point of the actual... Um, animation set that you're working with uh, to, to place them in the right places individually. Uh, I, I'm still learning about a little bit about some of the ways that you can manipulate these things and make things stick at the beginning at the end. But uh, the idea is that you can use the Control Alt and Shift keys to simply change the duration of these things and the scale. Uh, and you can even as we did yesterday, there's a right-click menu where you can say, I want the scout to be moving at 0.5 and adjust the scale from the start. Uh, and that means that he will be moving at twice the speed. But because he's moving at twice the speed, it actually caused him to disappear be before the beginning of the shot, I believe. At any rate, the uh, the point is that you can, if you like, adjust the, uh, the speed of these individual uh, animation sets relative to one another. Oh, Alt control shift and you got to do this just right. And so now if I want if I want to have the spy just going absolutely spasmodic, I can do that while the scout runs by. I can make the scout go by very slowly. Oop, I did that wrong. And it takes a little getting used to. Uh, but uh, again, because what I did there was I had this thing uh, in the wrong place. So I hit Alt, Control, Shift. Now I can adjust the speed of the scout and it won't change uh, his relative location. There he comes. All right. And then if I do the same here and make sure that this is in the little box formation before I begin hitting Alt, Control, and Shift, I can make the spy go very quickly. So the spy is doing his thing really fast and the scout will go by in just a moment at really super slow motion. So there you go. Uh, with the exact same technique that we used to uh, edit individual shot scales, you can ed edit individual animation set scales. Uh, and those of you who have been uh, paying close attention will notice that you can 
do things like blade these shots uh, and other uh, interesting things, or excuse me, blade these animation sets, because the animation sets in a lot of ways behave like shots in some ways. So I encourage you to experiment with those and see what you can do, uh, what kinds of effects you can produce, and what kinds of fun you can have with those. Uh, and so with that, that is your tip of the day number 61. I am your host, as always, your friend Jimmer Lins. I thank you for watching, I thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel, and I really appreciate all the great feedback. I hope that you're having a great day, and until the next tip of the day, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.